Hey there, and welcome to the Singapore Management University's brand new module bidding online system, also known as BOSS. In the next few minutes, I'll be walking you through some of the new features in BOSS by planning and bidding for a couple of modules together. So let's get started. This is the first page you will see once you log in. It's called the summary page, and it gives you an overview of your bidding process. On the left, you will be shown any administrative holes if you have any, important BOSS bidding dates, information about the number of course units you can bid this term, and the amount of e-dollars that are currently available to you. On the right, you'll see your bidding results once they're out, some shortcuts to important information, and a list of modules you are exempted from, and credits you've received from your exchange. So let's start bidding. We'll start by going to the Plan and Bid page by clicking on this link on the navigation bar. This is the planning page, not to be confused with the bidding page. This page is a preliminary step that lets you visually plan and find the most suitable modules to take for your next semester. On the left, you will find the same important information from the summary page earlier, including the amount of e-dollars you have left. These panels can be hidden away to give you more space for the bidding card. The bidding card is like a shopping card where you lay out a bunch of modules that you're interested to take. What is in the bidding card does not represent what you're actually going to bid. It's just a planning area. Don't worry, as we progress through this video, you'll understand what I mean. On the right, you'll find some important instructions that you should familiarize yourself with before bidding. And below this is a weekly timetable that is currently empty. So let's put some things on this calendar, shall we? Start by clicking on the shopping cart icon on the left. This will bring you to the course search page. To search for a course, select either a subject area or a course area. In this case, I'll be picking the information systems subject area and clicking the search button. Results will appear on the left, and once you take at least one of the courses, the classes will appear on the right. To view the details of the course, click on the group number. Remember to check the prerequisites to ensure that you meet the requirements to take the course. To add the class into your card, click the Add to Card button. Because the card is just for your planning, you can add as many classes as you like. What if you know the course code of your desired course? Simply enter the course code with the subject area, in this case, IS, 102 and the course will appear on the left. Once again, pick a few classes and add them to your cart. You can also filter courses based on the course area. Course areas allow you to find courses under specific areas such as majors, university core, GRS, etc. You can select two course areas, say GRS and marketing, to list courses cross-listed in both. Note that cross-listing doesn't mean the course will be double-counted. A course can't be double-counted towards the first major and program requirement. If in doubt, check your degree progress report or consult your school manager. For this example, we need to clear some university calls. Let's pick COM 101. Because it's a university call, there are tons of classes available for this course. I'm not really a morning person, so using the new filter tools, I can remove all morning classes, effectively cutting the list by half. Let's say I also prefer not to have Friday classes. I can also filter away classes from specific days, reducing the list further. By the way, be sure to try out the View Curriculum Progress tool, a simplified version of your degree progress report. On the top of this page is a Workshops tab. This tab is where you will find compulsory courses such as Finishing Touch, which requires bidding too. This tab works just like the Courses tab. Simply select the workshop and add classes into your cart. Once that is done, we can start planning our timetable by going back to the Plan and Bid page. Notice that a bidding card is now populated with all the classes you've added earlier. Next to every class is a little pin. Clicking on this pin will cause the class to be added to your timetable. Notice that the item is currently blue. That is because we've only pinned this class to the timetable and haven't bid for it. We're just planning now, so let's pin everything onto our timetable now. Well, that is one messy timetable, but now you can see which classes have the same timings and which don't. You can now slowly plan out your timetable by unpinning classes that are unsuitable to you until you've got an ideal timetable. In my case, I will be selecting the classes that are not conflicting with any others. Another feature to note is the Conflicts Warning button. This warning will appear whenever they detect conflicting classes or exams. Note that the Conflicts Warning is actually quite detailed, revealing not just exam conflicts, but also class conflicts. But wait, why does the OBHR101 class have a conflict? Well, when we scroll through the timetable, it turns out that we plan for a second OBHR101 class that only begins in week 2. 
so be sure to look through all the weeks in the term to identify public holidays and different timings. Now that our courses have been sorted out, let's do the same for our workshops. Workshops are a bit unique that they don't have classes every week, so it's important to look through the calendar. Once again, uncheck the classes you don't wish to take for that specific workshop. And that is it, we now have a complete timetable. Now let's start bidding. Click the checkout button to begin bidding. This is the checkout bids page. On the left of this page, you'll find all the same information again, including the amount of e-dollars you have remaining. On the right, you'll find important instructions. Once again, be sure to read these instructions before you begin bidding. Below the instructions is the bids submission box. Notice that all the courses you've had in your card is listed here. Just remember that these courses won't be bid until you add them into your bid submission. To make it easier, the classes we've picked in our planning timetable have been highlighted in green. So let's add them to our bid by ticking the checkboxes. Because we've had more courses than we are allowed to, we are told to set a dice value. That is, should all the six courses be successfully bid, the dice value identifies which is the first course the system will automatically drop, starting with 1 to 6. Next, add the bid value for each course and we're all set. Take note of the available balance as you enter your bid values. Repeat the process with the workshops. And we're now ready to bid. Once you are sure of your bids, click on the Submit Bids button where we'll be asked to confirm the action. And now our bids are all in. When we return to the Timetable Planner, you'll notice that the boxes of the courses you bid are now pink instead of blue, indicating that they will be bid once the window closes. After the bidding window closes, you'll see the results to your bid in the summary page. It turns out that our Management Accounting course bid was unsuccessful. In our case, it was because we asked DICE to drop it first should we get all the modules. You can view the overall results of all the courses and workshops by clicking on this shortcut below. Searching for our Management Accounting course will review what everyone else bid for the classes. You will also find the Enrollment section in the summary page indicating your confirmed courses. Once we return to the Plan and Bid page, you'll find that the boxes have changed colour once again, indicating the courses that have been confirmed in our timetable and the courses that have not. You will also find the exam schedule below the timetable. On the left, you will find the list of your enrolled courses. This is also where you will be able to drop your courses. Take note that in the future, this is where you will visit to drop your courses, whether there is a bidding window open or not. Also remember that if you drop your courses from week 3 to week 7, you will receive a W grade, and from week 8 onwards, an F grade. Maybe taking 5 courses might be a bit too much for me. So let's drop IS-103. Take the courses you wish to drop and click Drop Selected Class. They will ask you to confirm your decision and your course is now dropped. Once we're back at the planning page, we can unpin the two courses now that we're no longer interested in them anymore and admire our confirmed two-day class timetable. And that was a walkthrough of all the important steps you will go through to bid for your courses in the new bidding system.